Good evening and welcome back again. Maybe my one loyal viewer, who knows. Uh, going to try and stream a game I haven't played in years, and uh, that will probably be shown in the uh, skill or lack thereof when I play it. Uh, we're going to try and play in Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, um, which is kind of like, it's built on a Quake 3 engine, so it's a shooter, but it's set in a Star Trek universe, uh, specifically kind of the, the Voyager era. Um, and I remember playing it and having a lot of fun. I don't think I beat it, because again, as you probably see if you watch these things frequently, is that I don't tend to beat games, because I can lose interest. Um, this is the Collector's Edition, which I got in a haul last year. I did a video on that, too. Sadly, it's missing some of the extras that it came with, supposedly. Uh, it's supposed to have like an extra little uh, music CD and stuff, and that's not in here. There's a really cool comic. Um, that was just for the Collector's Edition. Uh, sadly, no manual or anything, so I'll have to see if I can complete it sometime. It also supposed to come with a little collector's pin. I'm assuming it looks like the uh, the Star Trek insignia. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and install this guy. Today, we are playing on our trusty Windows 98. This is a P3 700. Pop the disk in here. Maybe there's a disk in already. Nope, there is not. Get the installation going. We're going to talk about the game and everything. Yes, I had Winamp open, because of course I did. Let's get that rolling. Auto start? I don't remember. We'll find out. This has the uh, Sound Blaster AW64 installed, and I think it's just nagging constantly. Oh, I see what's going on. This particular <laughs> drive doesn't always want to close. That's uh, par for the course of these old machines, right? All right. Let's see. Did it detect it? Come on. You can do it. You can do it. It's funny. I saw this is actually available as abandonware, too, uh, which means you can actually download and just um, flat out uh, install it that way. Pretty funny if the disc doesn't read, though. I mean, funny, right? I'll try that one more time. On CD. <laughs> Let's give it another shot. So, welcome uh, to the fiddling with the CD around dry evening. Just like old times. You might be reading the disc now. There we go. We're getting something. Huh? It's real hardware. That's uh, kind of what you get, right? So if you missed it earlier, this is a P3 700 megahertz machine that I'm running on right now. Uh, it has a overpowered video card in it, a Radeon 8500. Um, all in wonder, all in one wonder, or whatever they call those things with the video out and and all that stuff. So well, that's great. Doesn't want to seem to read the disc. Maybe I will go ahead and start downloading the actual. Like uh, I said, you can get this game for abandonware. I may start kicking off that download here. Because, not having, oh, there we go. It's found the CD. But I'm going to start kicking off the download just in case. So if you haven't been there, myabandonware.com is a great website um, that has a lot of games um, that have been abandoned by the publisher, if you will, uh, and can be downloaded basically for free. Okay. Eight Force. Well, 600 megs, so we're going to download that. Go. Just get that kicked off. I actually. So let's see if it actually started reading it or not. <laughs> Boy, sure doesn't want to play nice. There, right, Ted. Yep, uh, everything's well uh, so far around here. It's, uh, of course, interesting or unprecedented times, so hopefully you're doing well as well. Better than the CD.
so what I actually have is I have a uh, a little NAS setup that's connecting the um, I kind of retro network going on. So my primary computer, my regular computer, has two network cards in it. I'm planning to make a video on this at some point too. It has two network cards attached to it. One goes to kind of a retro network, um, which means it has its own router, and I just used whatever random router I had laying around, right, to provide uh, addresses. Then the second NIC on my computer is attached to my regular network that gives me internet and everything, but it allows me to basically copy files to this NAS uh, that I have attached to the network. And I can then drop games on that, and I can drop stuff from my normal computer onto here. Like, I just uh, got the patch for this. Downloaded it from a website two minutes ago, dumped it on the uh, on the thing here. Yeah, this is not playing nice. Let's take a look and see if the... Oh my goodness, yeah, this CD is dirty beyond belief. So, <laughs> I'm going to have to clean it off real quick. I should have looked at the CD, because, yeah, that is just... Hmm, you can probably see those chunks on there. That's not supposed to be there, so... I'll say, I don't think it's... Uh, I could bang the top of the machine. I don't think it's the machine's fault at this point, so... All right, let's see if we can just do this the quick and dirty way. Stand by. It's it's a live experience. Cuz yeah, that CD uh <laughs> I mean, really. I'm not sure if you can see that here. Those spots are not supposed to be there, so I may have to go with a fairly uh, SMS probe alcohol here, so we'll see. Or maybe we'll just start with some uh, some water, and we'll grab a damn paper towel here. This is fantastic. You wanted the experience of uh, the experience of actually, uh, you know, reliving the glory days of fiddling with this kind of crap. And I can certainly see why this is not reading because it is scratched to the hell and back. So we're downloading the ISO right now as well. And as you probably saw in the bottom corner here, this thing does have daemon tools installed. So I definitely use that. Um, I've used it on several of my Windows and 8 machines uh, this way. I basically just, you know, connect them all together and copy up the ISO, usually download the ISO to the actual machine that's running it, and then try it that way. That way uh, you have faster reads and everything. Hello, Brad, welcome. Thanks for uh, hopping on here. I am trying, trying my darnest to get the CD, and now it has no stains on it anymore, right? So that's good. Try my darnest to get this uh, Star Trek Vo uh, Voyager Elite 4 CD to actually read because. So I I did a video on these and I got a. No kidding, you can't read it. Let's see this time now. I got a, a kind of a collection of uh, big box games. Obviously, you can see some behind me. But I managed to find a stash at a yard sale uh, last year. Oh, that looks a lot better. Quicker. Can I do it? It's really scratched too, so I'm not gonna hold my breath. Looks like it's doing something. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. You're right, Ted. It wouldn't. Uh... Now, the side if you bought a game, right? You just picked a game. Look at that. Access granted. How appropriate is that? Um. So, where is the actual installation? Because this is just the, uh, that would be amazing if this is not actually the installation CD, and it's just the uh, collector's one that has the fun stuff on it. And it might be. That's, uh, that's even better. Let's see what Star Trek demos we'll have. We'll wait for that download. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. It might actually be the, uh, the, uh, I thought I had the actual game, apparently. I do not. So that's a good start. Let's take a look. Open that CD up. So the download is progressing. 
It is truly, truly authentic experience here. So the collector edition uh, apparently does not include the actual game, but just the demos and the extra stuff. So it actually had the the flimsy little thing probably would have held the actual game. Snafus indeed. Let's see if we can do something else while that's downloading. I have a few other games on here, but we can also try one of these demos since we have time. I have a few more minutes on the download. And it's like something that I always enjoyed in running into Snafus is that you actually overcome them eventually. So I refused to give up. There was one time when I was doing this, my uh, Windows 90 machine at the time, a Pentium 2 300, I think. I was having a heck of a time, but I was at a LAN party and they had so much stuff I really wanted to get on. Or I wanted that Windows 98 loaded onto everything. And I just struggled with that thing like all weekend, but I didn't want to leave empty handed. So I think we finally managed to get it reloaded and get it installed. And I could copy some stuff over so I didn't go empty handed. Because, you know, you know, back in the day when you went to those LAN parties and stuff, um, all the uh, stuff you ran into there, you didn't want to leave without getting anything. Because often it was just the only place to get software, music, stuff like that another Star Trek demo here. I played Armada. Uh, let's do Klingon Academy. All demo. That's very loud. Setup. So I'm glad I got the demo CD working. <laughs> For anyone joined late, I've probably said it a couple of times now, but with the machine in question we have here is a P3, and this was actually on my very first video, I believe. This is a P3 um, with apparently a lot of unknown devices. Don't worry about that. We'll just do that. Problem solved. Uh, uh, P3 700 megahertz, uh, probably like uh, 128 or 200, uh, something like that. Uh, meg of RAM. Let's see, 192. I got this from um, WinWorld PC, I think, the actual installation. So uh, thanks for the offer there for the activation code. But yeah, this is working fine. So then uh, we have a Radeon 8500, which is certainly a little more powerful than this machine would have had back in the day. So it's an all-in-one version the, uh, with all the dongle stuff and everything. It's actually a card that's been in the family now for a long time. Um, so this original, my wife bought it when it was new. Still have it. It works great. Uh, I had to uh, kind of lubricate the fan a little bit because it was really squeaky and noisy. But then after that, we have a Soundblaster AW64. Or maybe, no, never mind. I think I put a uh, Soundblaster Live card in this machine, actually. So I kind of integrated into my streaming setup again here recently. So I haven't used it for a while. It's become my favorite uh, Winamp machine because I have a small collection of MP3s from back in the day that I've carried with me the entire time because I'm a digital ho and physical hoarder. Um, got Windows 98. Yep, we got that. Oh yeah, we hit we hit the minimum specs here. Good long URL there, or a uh, long path. Um, and I've hadn't used this for streaming for a while, so or not even streamed at all with it. I think so. I went ahead and plugged it back in because I I miss using this machine. It was a uh, I first built it for the channel and. Uh, it's just been a trooper ever since, haven't really had any problems. I think I swapped the video card. I think I built it originally with the Voodoo card, but I didn't feel like it was an appropriate use for this machine because the processor is so powerful for the Voodoo card, for a Voodoo 3, um, that that felt just uh, total overkill processor-wise. Still downloading. I need to copy it to the NAS as well, but we'll take... Uh, I don't need M player. A setup for video options. Select available resolutions. Whoop, there it goes, disappears. Come on, you can do it. Back. Go 1280 by 1024. More than enough. I have to go higher, but. Yeah, so I thought it goes to, um, you know, high resolution because uh, the, uh, the thing I have in between the capture, which normally converts VGA signals, um, can't handle 8 to 5 hertz. 
So I have a feeling the game is trying to go there. So we're going to go even higher resolution and see. Uh, where did it go? Armada. I should have looked where it dropped it. I did play Armada on this thing, and that was a lot of fun too. Never played it when that actually was out. Fox, that's Motorhead, Electronic Arts. There we are, 14 degrees east. Uh huh. Um, right, we'll launch it. Now that's a multiplayer. <laughs> the setup. Yeah, I heard the LE was kind of uh, a cut down version of uh, of that. That didn't uh, fare so well. Try. We're gonna run them. Very high resolution. I have a 19-inch monitor plugged in right now that is capable of this resolution, so we'll see what the capture does here. There we go. We're running at basically the equivalent of 4K resolution back in the day here now. We'll do a training mission. Why not? We'll see how uh, how well this machine handles that. Uh, oh my goodness, it's 3 in the morning. That's right, you're, uh, you're pretty far off from uh, here. I'm in... Uh, U.S. Central here, so. I swear, I was, on my last live stream, I was streaming Genesis games on RetroPie. Pretty hilarious. I don't think you can see anything on, uh... Let yeah, me do... Uh... Because the resolution is so high... I don't think you can see anything on that text there. That's a lot of stuff going on right now. Hmm. I'll take it for his word because I can't see anything on that tiny, tiny, tiny text. Because I don't think any of the... Uh, Scotland? Okay, gotcha. I don't think any of the games back then were really technically adapted for that 1600 by 12 in resolution, because, I mean, no one could really run that back then. I mean, it would have been, I mean, it's equivalent to 4K now, which, of course, got him better, but even a couple of years ago, 4K, 60 FPS was pretty unattainable for most normal video cards, right? So this 1600 by 1200 was equivalent back then. A lot of talking. So, I thought the Klingon Academy, which one am I thinking of? Because there's one, I know there's a Starfleet Command once, uh, and I did have one of those, unfortunately I got lost. Or your, it's Tactical Chip Combat, and it sure looks like that here. I could have sworn there was a, um, there was a FPS Klingon one as well. Was that Honor Guard? Star Trek Klingon Honor Guard, maybe? You wish to replay any of the progress? Continue on the next lesson. No warship captain, regardless of his skill, can fight effectively without his crew. <laughs> you will now learn how to issue. Blah blah blah. Great. Talk talk talk. The verbal order system, or VOX, is your direct contact with your rigged officers. So let's see what we have. Yeah, we have even at sixteen hundred or twelve hundred. This monitor is still doing seventy-five uh, hertz. That's pretty impressive. I found this uh, ViewSonic recently here in town. Uh, it's a 19-inch uh, a beige uh, ViewSonic professional series. So probably designed for graphical workloads and stuff like that. So when you tune in tonight, I bet you were uh, just aching to listen to a Klingon tutorial. Hmm, nice. You played the actual demo when it uh, when it came out then? I wish I would have been able to go to more cons and stuff when I was younger. It would have been uh, awesome to see all these uh, games back then, but I just, like everyone else, I just kind of, you know, read the magazines and everything. I subscribed to the uh, Scandinavian version of PC Gamer, so that's where I got most of my gaming news. I bet he's telling me a lot of important stuff right now.
Once you have done so, oh, I see. It's actually... I can't even uh, render fast enough to not, like, fill in. Look at that. Even flickering here is probably that resolution. Uh, let's see. Let's exit this and let's go to... A lot of jerkiness on that uh, capture there. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, probably the nice part with the 8500 uh, video card here is that it has actual DVI out, so I may just switch to using that uh, pure capture instead. But I'd like to try and make this work. So I have to hop off here again to grab that cable. But if I do fire up the other game and it still runs at 85 hertz, uh, yeah, you're not wrong. It's just a constant blathering of like. Which, you know, that's part of the endearing part of Star Trek for me is that techno babble, right? They're just making up words as they go along, and it's a new buzzword every episode. And I uh, actually recently watched all of. Um, what was the most recent one? Yeah, DS9. I never watched that when it was out, so I actually ended up watching it recently. Uh, you can stream all of those now these days, right? All the Star Trek shows. And it was really good. I heard really good things, and it was really good. Um, you missed the 90s, I guess, more than anything. Playing on schooling me on joystick uh, usage and configuration. It's good to know. The download is almost done. Then we're gonna drop that over to my NAS, and then copy it to this machine, and then we'll maybe in business. Okay, can you actually exit this? Because it's getting ridiculous. You go into a uh, there's a simulator. So again, new game. Can you skip tutorial? No. Brief. <laughs> I know they just went overboard on trying to be uh, technical in some of these games. Can you read that? Because I can't read that. <laughs> That's very dramatic. Yeah, it's not like in a 1600 by 12 resolution. Again, it's like, you know, the 4K of the day, so it is total overkill for this purpose here, but it looks really, really sharp. Sharper than I would have experienced, so. Oh, really? Cool. I can't remember what his name uh, was. Was Armin Schwartz, maybe? I think he passed away recently, right? The guy who played Nogs, or played Nog. Unfortunately. I think he was in his 50s only. Which was bad. He did a really good job in that show. Okay. One minute left of download. Six seconds. Boy, this is real dramatic. I'm not vested at all in this. <laughs> yeah, it looks good, but it's just... You can tell, like, uh, that pop in there. It certainly wasn't... Uh, I would test it much at this resolution, so. I wish I would pay attention to this, at uh, the Academy, because I have no idea how to fly this thing. But it looks really advanced. Uh... Impulse speed. Full. Impulse ahead full. Woohoo, alright. Yeah, the Firefly series was amazing. Uh, definitely liked that one a lot, too. I think, like, I mean, I feel like many people, including me at least, um, had never uh, heard of it. And then we watched Serenity. Uh, and that just like, wow, this is amazing. And then I watched the show, and that was really good. So, all right, we are going to copy the file over here now while I'm getting destroyed. To and to games. Copying that. It's a lot faster. 10 megaseconds. 100 megabit at least, so it's copying really fast. So I think we're ready to exit here. <laughs> good game. Good game, everyone. I feel bad now because it's probably like someone's absolute favorite game and I just like 
wrote it off, but right, Firefly was really, really good. Um, appropriate for the time, I guess, and it just fits so well, and the universe was great. Uh, really, really enjoy that. All right, we are copying the file. We're getting a few steps closer to playing the game I actually promised on this live stream. Uh, but again, like you mentioned earlier, uh, it's part of the experience of messing with these old machines is, is getting stuff like this working, it seems like. But yeah, I was going to mention I was playing like the dirty thing of uh, emulation. On my last stream, I was playing Genesis games because I never had a Genesis growing up. So uh, just we were just experimenting and testing totally random Genesis games. Some of them good, some of them bad. Um, but, uh, you know, it just works, right? So there's the history enjoyment in that thing. So let's see, do we have... Nope, I'll have to extract it here. So let's do this. Extract, 7-sip. That's extracting. When that's done extracting, I'll copy it locally, and then we'll have the actual file we need. <laughs> Good grief. At least this is 100 megabit, I think, Nick, on this guy. Uh, I have a, so I have all my machines networked like that. I have a Windows 5 machine as well. Um, and the one I, uh, or just one sitting right here, I've streamed on it a couple times. That is a 10 megabit NIC. And, you know, it's fully workable. It's not like the games you're copying for that size. Um, that, uh, it's, uh, you know, for Windows 5, there aren't going to be that many that are huge. I mean, of course, the CD-ROM games that are some sometimes large, but most of our DOS games, it's fine. And it's not like I'm sitting like, come on, copy, copy. Kind of fire it off and go do something else. But it's nice when they have 100 megabit like here. So, and I'm extracting it there now too. Yeah. <laughs> Serenity has so many good quotes. I just, I think we still, I still quote that today with my friends and my family too. It's like, you know, if I'm not back within an hour, just, Come get me, all right? I want to be stuck in this, stuck in this rock. So uh, this is a uh, Pentium 3 uh, machine, 700 megahertz, and uh, 192 mega RAM. Just checked it, uh, regular spinning disk. And it's actually, I just realized it was the uh, the machine I built first for my for my channel here. Kind of a hodgepodge of parts that came together pretty well. At the time, I built it with a Voodoo 3 card, but it felt like the processor was too fast for that. So right now, it has a Radeon 8500 uh, all-in-one wonder, I think they call them. Um, which is uh, providing the video for it here. So, and then I'm playing this, and of course I put a little fake frame around there on the capture, but uh, it is being played on a 19-inch actual CRT monitor. So, and right now I am in the process of extracting the Elite Forces ISO we need to actually play the game of promise, because as we found out, the early people that were on here, the box copy I have uh only has the bonus cd but not the actual game so wah, wah. so yeah i'll have to uh um i'll have to uh see if i can track that down i imagine just buying the cd shouldn't be too expensive but i have a lot of these from that particular batch i got in that um yard sale or whatever there was a lot of stuff missing and the guy or the the lady i bought it from they also been with just loose manuals and everything too for games and I didn't want to stand there for hours just picking through his stuff. Um, all right, let's take a look here now. There should be a folder now. Uh, I don't want to stand there forever just picking apart and... Okay, so we're going to copy this to the C drive because I don't feel like running off the network. Seems like it's uh, asking for trouble. Some of the other games I played on there. So we copy back and forth, back and forth. Hopefully it's faster than 12 minutes. We'll find out. Um... I didn't want to stand there just digging through that box just to find everything, so I just kind of abandoned it. And that I'm guessing the person originally had these games probably were taken out. And I did that too a lot when I was a kid. I took the manual out with me to like bed or whatever to read and flip through when I couldn't play the game. Um, so it was just something I did, and I'm guessing this person did the same thing because there's a lot of small pieces missing. Um, <laughs> I can imagine uh, the Windows 98 machine can't handle the gigabit because I mean at that point OS has to do it and that means the CPU is doing it and yeah you're gonna just kill it so nice yeah I think a lot of, I mean I feel I didn't wasn't aware of this game until later um, I certainly I think I remember seeing magazine reviews about it but I don't think I played it until much much later uh, then at that point definitely having a more powerful machine uh, and I probably pirated it oops in this case here at least I sort of bought it I guess because the actual uh, minimum specs on this guy, and I'm looking at it right here on the box, 
is uh, 3D hardware accelerated with full OpenGL support, I was expected. Pentium 2, 233 megahertz processor with 8 megabytes of video card. Or AMD 350K62. Uh, it doesn't say anything about recommended, just the minimum. So yeah, 700 is you know overkill almost for this, but not as overkill like say a, a you know gigahertz or faster machine would be, right? A 100% Windows 9598 NT4.0 SP5 Windows 2000 compatible computer system. So that's a pretty broad range there, uh, including compatible 32-bit drive, CD-ROM drive, video card, blah blah. 650 megs of uncompressed hard drive disk space, quad-speed CD-ROM drive. DirectX 7, so yeah. Internet player requires 100% Windows, blah, blah, blah. Compatible 28 kilobyte modem or faster. It's funny, I almost like to have, uh, you know, my kids or something download something at a, at a modem speed to see what they think, because uh, they're used to just, you know, instantaneous video any given second they want, right? But uh, these back in the day when, when you heard that dial-up sound, I'm going to finally connect it, and, and uh, in my case, when it connected at like 48 or 50, Something like that it was just like, oh, that's amazing. Yep, you're right. It is Quake Power Quake 3 Engine. It actually has a logo for it here, even. Powered by Quake 3 Engine. So this is the collector's version, which is pretty funny because it's taped at the bottom. I'm not going to open that, but it is just a sleeve over the actual regular box. So the, the regular box is inside there. Unfortunately, the regular box does not have all the contents at all. So... So otherwise, on this machine, uh, I have played. Um, let's see, this is the creative. I decided to install all the bloatware for all the creative uh, Sound Blaster stuff, just because I don't know, it was just fun. Uh, Dark Rain Two, played it on this guy uh, for that time. Need for Speed Two SE, and Motorhead is another fantastic racing game. Hostile Waters is an underrated one. I'm gonna try and explore that sometime on a live stream again, um, and. Uh, see uh, because it's it was kind of like a weird um 3d vehicular thing but still an rts it's really interesting combination so yeah <laughs> exactly i just like retro computers so it's just fun to play whatever game um and uh and mostly like when i decide on a stream i just pick a game just to be able to focus it um and uh, apparently you still have to fiddle with stuff, so I should probably check this stuff beforehand. But yeah, Max is another fantastic game, which this machine is way more powerful for that. But this kind of P3 machine feels like almost the best to have in the smack middle of the 90s. Um, yeah, that's right, they did make this for PlayStation 2, which I found, I was looking around to see on eBay for uh, Elite Forces 2, and I saw that the, they had made both 1 and 2, I think, for PlayStation 2. I never played that, but I should try that. See how it plays on that. I have a PS2 hooked up to a CRT TV behind me or somewhere. Um, but as far as a P3, it's such a good range because you can get full like DOS compatibility, and this does have that through the some of live emulation stuff, um, which isn't the, the perfect you know ISA based um, sound card thing. Which this has ISA slots. I may again put an ISA card in here. I have a, a AW64. I think I could swap it instead. You can actually configure it so you have use the uh, ISA card in uh, DOS and then the PCI card in Windows. That is possible as well. Um, but just the range you get because you can have a DOS compatible machine all the way up to pretty late Windows 98 machine games, right? Because if you have a five, six, or seven hundred megahertz machine, you get a you get a lot of gaming out of that. So um, they played Jedi Knight on this. Not a favorite game of mine. Play that a lot. Uh, we actually were playing Monster Truck Madness 2 in LAN sometime, or we did at one point, and it was pretty funny. So I'm planning on maybe, if uh, one of my friends is watching the stream here, sometime maybe, maybe uh, play multiplayer network when you know things open up again, maybe, and actually stream when we're doing that. That might be really fun because uh, they're I don't know, usually just shenanigans start right, and that's what's funny. So. I did try and play Open TTD on this machine, which is a uh, open source clone of Transport Tycoon Deluxe, which is a phenomenal uh, business management game. And there, that that version is modern. I couldn't get it run on Windows 98 because um, you have to find an older version. That was a little tricky. So Revenant to play that on here. That is a uh, Diablo style game from um, it's from uh, Square. No, not from Square. From Eidos. Same people who made Tomb Raider, or at least published by them. So it's got that triangular box. Uh, Half-Life, obviously, for this machine. That's pretty much right up his alley. Uh, Star Trek Armada I did play on here. I never played it before, but I do have the big box version for it, so uh, I'll give that a whirl. Um, 
I love the big boss. I just have the CD, so that that was really fun too. There's a cat, and then uh, System Shock Two. I'll probably stream that sometime too. That is a uh, pretty much you know War Inspectors. Uh, all besides Deus Ex, I guess, but just fantastic game. Total Annihilation, Annihilation Kingdoms. That's a hard one to say for a uh, non-named speaker. Total Annihilation Kingdoms uh, was a follow-up to the Total Annihilation um, uh, RTS game that came out in the height of the mid-90s of the uh, RTS boom. Kingdoms was a follow-up to that, which replaced all the robots with medieval soldiers. Uh, didn't really take me the same way. Total Annihilation was so amazing, especially on multiplayer, because you had like so many units. And they tried to almost like the Warcraft route in Kingdoms, and it just didn't pan out the same way. So, a real tournament. That's, I don't think that needs an introduction. That has to be on every Windows 8 machine, especially for networking. It is a mandatory requirement. I actually uh, brought this machine to a LAN party, like a huge one, like a, a modern one, uh, last year. Um, and... Uh, we had uh, uh, just a, a crossover network cable connected to two machines, and we were playing Unreal Tournament with each other. I just had two of those machines with us, so you have a whole bunch of people playing like you know, the modern games at the time, and then you know my buddy just playing Unreal Tournament. So. Darkstone is that the um, hack and slash uh, game that has to? It, it's isometric but three D hack and slash Diablo style dungeon crawler game. Just in that case, yes, because I'm pretty sure that's the one. You can correct me if I'm wrong there, but uh, I did have the box for that, so it, it's sat here. So yes, as you can see behind me, I I like big box games, right? I have quite a few. I have at least one bag, or like a black uh, plastic trash bag of those games I got missing through it, uh, moves throughout some time. I'm not sure when. That included even more games in there that I miss, such as the original Theme Hospital. Probably Darkstone, I think that's the one we're talking about. Settlers 2 and Expansion Pack, among many others. And um, I'm really bummed because a lot of those games now are really expensive. Like Theme Hospital, for example, got super expensive. I don't know why. Just harder to find. Um, but yeah, the Darkstone, if that is, we actually played that networked when I was in um, high school. That was a lot of fun. I had two computers because I managed to convince my parents that, well, I don't want to sell my old computer yet when I got my new one. So I lived in an apartment by myself. And my buddies would come over uh, at high, in high school and we would just play that game multiplayer via uh, no modem cable. So that would be fun to experience again. Tiberian Sun on here, obviously. Yes, Cat, I'm aware of your existence. I think it's getting close to feeding time. Um... Ute Tower is a sequel to Sim Tower. Uh, Ute is the last name of the guy who basically invented um, Sim Tower. So then he was he published U Tower, which is a direct sequel. Something's better, something's better, or something's worse. I think LGR did a really good coverage of that one recently, specifically because I know he's a big Sim um, Sim game fan. So um, I didn't gra get grabbed by U Tower as much as I did by Sim Tower. It just feels simpler, I guess. Uh, then we have XCOM Enforcer. I tried that because I, I like the XCOM games, which is, of course, isometric, tactical, you know, combat games. Enforcer is a total arcade shooter. Think like Unreal Tournament, except behind the char character, 3D view, run around, and it's just total tongue-in-cheek. It's like, reminds me of uh, Destroy uh, All Humans kind of thing. It's totally a left-field game I didn't expect playing it. I did find the big box that I recently, so I want to give that a shot. And that was kind of fun, but short-lived. And what I did start, which I would like to live stream sometime too, uh, is Subterra Core. Started the demo of that back when it came out, and it's a uh, really full-fleshed uh, JRPG, basically. I mean, I think it's a Western main game, but it has a very JRPG style. You run around a town, encounters, turn-based combat, stuff like that. Yes, I will play Dune 2000. Um, for sure, I had planned to do that. Uh, yes, Settlers 2 is, is a fantastic game. I'm open to stream that too. Uh, the challenge I have, which is funny, because you're doing all this stuff, uh, streaming and connecting all these machines, and it's harder than you think to capture a lot of the odder resolutions and everything. So the challenge is capturing, for example, then um, higher frame rates. That's what I'm struggling with. But I think I have a solution for that. But Dune 2000, you cannot really configure that. You can run in a... There we go. I think it's installed. We're going to mount this sucker and get it running. Uh, finally thing we set out to do. 
But it, there's a lot of just squigglies, if you will, to try and get all this capture working, because uh, especially when you're hopping games like this. So there we go. Star Trek League Forces. Install for the love of something. Access granted. Access granted. Huzzah! We, we get the problem, we overcome it. Now we just need to install the game, and we're only like 40 minutes in. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Well, yes, um, if you want to know how much of a nerd I am, I actually did a report on the Dune series of games in high school. I can't remember what the software was called, but it was like a PowerPoint slide tool. It wasn't PowerPoint, but they wanted us to do like a presentation. And you know, it was Computer Lab, and I was like, I can finally... You know, do stuff in school. That's my calling. Yes, we want to install the game. Right out. There we go. Installing from ISO now, right? So it should be pretty quick. Look at that beautiful render here. Um, and uh, so everyone was like, you know, kind of just uh, more or less. It was high school, so a lot of people were just kind of faking their way through it, right? They just did the bare minimum. No, nope, I went all in. I spent like, I asked if I could get like a copy of the program from my home computer so I brought it home and I mean I worked on that forever I sat in the after hours in the computer lab and I worked on that and I think I still have it on my server somewhere um, but I actually um, yeah there is an option for that the the graphics isn't so much the problem for me as the converter I have that converts VGA to HDMI uh, can't handle 85 hertz, and that's the problem. Especially when you're lo running at low resolution, the, the frame rates are kicking up really high, right? That's the problem. And I think I, I have a solution for that. The capture card I have will do direct capture uh, via DVI. So on these newer machines, that should work just fine. So if I play on this machine, I should do DVI direct capture, but I do have it through the VGA converter here. So that said, if this game now runs at 85 hertz, I'll probably have to excuse myself and dig up a DVI cable and switch it around. All part of the experience. Um, but yeah, I went all in on that presentation, and I had just played Dune 2000, so that's why I was real into it. So I made, like, the house logo slide in from the side and everything, and the teacher was so impressed that he, uh, he put that up as a, as a demo to show to the rest of the class, but, um, mostly because, you know, I was tired of doing calculus and that kind of stuff, so. In this particular machine, this one has a regular spinning drive, I am pretty sure. Uh, it is just a regular hard drive. So a lot of the machines I have definitely have compact flash or SD card. A machine I rebuilt recently, uh, I did make a video on it, is my AST Adventure Advantage, sorry, 812 machine. And that one I put an SD card converter in uh, because it has like a, it had 850 meg hard drive, which was clicking and broken almost immediately. Um, so that one I, I put an SD card one in. Um, and it's worked great so far. Uh, this one particular machine I'm pretty sure has just a large old ID hard drive just because I had some laying around and at the time felt more authentic but I do love the CF card and SD card options that they are out there that there is that option because these hard drives are not going to last forever and if you get new enough you can have SD or um, SSD and SATA converters and they work pretty well and everything so it's not like we're high and dry of really old machines then those are really good solutions all grunt mods that the uh, Dune 2000 um, I think I remember hearing about that or reading about. Um, there's so many mods and stuff like that I need to experience. Um, that's kind of why I got more into streaming more. And uh, if you're just joining me here, I am going to try and stream every Wednesday and Saturday night at the same time. Hopefully with a functional game. Um, but I think we have the game installed. Now watch it just crash and burn from here. So let's try and... Actually, we have the patch, so we're going to try that as well. Uh, this is where I was going to start, because I, I knew that you know they might have bug fixes and everything. So I did find the patch for this, uh, except I am now blind where it ended up. There it is, E-Force 12. I didn't rename it. We'll do this. Uh, Star Trek Elite Forces 1, 2. Here we go. So there's a patch readme. Nice. Ooh, single player. That's a Jerry Ryan voice pack. This will update the original game to use dialogue for 709 before my Jerry Ryan. Holy cow. Pretty impressive patch. How big is it? 
plenty of egg. I guess that was pretty big back from the day. It was probably compressed to... Yeah, it won't stop me crashing. I can pretend it will, dang it. I found it, so... But it's really cool. There, uh, The website is called... I'll see if I can um, find it here. Uh, I had it open a second ago. It's actually patches-scrolls.de. I'll put it in the chat, but... It's a really cool website um, because they have patches for just about every old game. Um, so it is really... It's uh, patches-scrolls.de. Yeah. So if you want a patch for an original game, uh, they have just about everything. It's really cool. So what I do then is I download the patch and I dump it on my ass so I have it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Everything does need a Jerry Ryan uh, voice pack. All right, let's see if we're going to get a capture here or if I'm up. Nope. Let's see if I can configure it. See if I can set the refresh rate. If I can't, then you're going to watch an invalid format while I get a thing. Uh, accept. Figure. It looks really cool. This is amazing. Wow, I can't play it. Uh, video data. Let's see. No, we do not want 640 by 480. Hi, hi, hi. A linear. Press textures. We're on max. Let's see if it goes down to the lower. Nope. All right. So. That's exactly as I was expecting. So now you get to watch me fumble around with a cable as well. <laughs> there is that part. There's actually a really fascinating article recently. I think it was Kotaku or something like that about the uh, experience of the women on Star Trek there. So, so what I'm going to do is actually try and switch this over to use DVI capture instead, which should take care of the problem with the... Um, I just got to find the DVI cable. So now you get to chat for two minutes while I go get a cable. Again, it's part of the experience here, right? So stand by. Good thing I labeled my box for cable so I know where I can find one. So that's the DVI cable. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. Try and feed that down here too. So that is all part of the experience. And as I mentioned earlier, I get to watch my back while I do this, I guess. Um, when I streamed uh, uh, Genesis through just a emulator the other day, it was really refreshing because it was just you push the button and it worked so which is emulators might be taboo sometimes just like they were anyway all right it's plugged in there i'm gonna crawl on my desk I have returned. All right, let's see if we can switch over the capture here now, too. Oh, boy, this is so much fun. Sure, that's connected. Otherwise, we may have to... 
switch tactic or see if there is a way we can force a refresh rate in the game. If anyone's familiar with any uh, console commands. Let's see. Just trying to see if there's a way to force. Um, yeah, say. <laughs> there you go. It's all part of the experience when it comes to uh, retro computer stuff. So I feel like half the times I've been streaming these things, I've been crawling under a desk. But it's always the problem that uh, the VGA converter I have, which works great for DOS games, just can't handle 8 to 5 hertz. So, however, I am not sure why. Decided to not even grab the video right now. It's true, I could try that. Signal. Sorry, y'all. Let me check the cable one more time. Well, we're going to, I think, abandon that option then and go back to the VJ and mess with that. Ah, jolly good time. Let me uh, think for a second, because I think we can. Maybe I have another idea. I need another converter cable, because I can use VGA. What's up, dude, guys? I can play something else, or I can keep fiddling this until I can get it working. So if you're just having a good time watching me mess around, then go for it. But um, Let's see. I need another converter cable. I think I can arrange for. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try one more thing. Stand by. <laughs> You're not wrong there. You want to see the uh, very detailed uh, skin there or the polygons of that character? We're going to try, try this approach and see. Actually, I'm going to try one more thing again. I think I know. No. Oh. Yeah, let's try this as well. Another cable swap. Change places.
say, what part of retro computer stuff isn't crawling around on the desk and stuff? Oh boy, let's see now. We'll try VGA. We have a signal. Very bright signal. So let's uh, do that. Be too bright. There we go. Cleaner. So it's not going through the, uh, the converter right now, which is probably the problem. So means, however, I am going to be playing on a different monitor here. We'll figure this out one of these days. Especially when I'm uh, capturing uh, much more than usual. I also need to swap around the audio. Let's see if this works before I do that. Say what kind of weather are you having over there? I know what the audio is playing right now. So, yep. This is a Sound Master Live, I'm pretty sure. So, I get a black screen. So, that didn't help. Alt F4 out of it. <laughs> that didn't help at all. Made it worse. <laughs> huh. Yeah, it's like 1024p at 90 FPS is what it's outputting, so that's causing the problem now, too. Should be able to capture that. It's really odd that it went just black. Holy cow. Got some bad weather over there. All right, I guess we're going back to just winging it and see if we can get the, the game to run at a different fr refresh rate. Or, um, uh, yeah, frame rate or whatever refresh rate. Okay. Now we have invalid formats, so let's see. Anything in configuration? You also have to trust me that this is really impressive right now. There is a command, so let's see if we can find some Quake 3 console commands. I might imagine there's a way to set the frame rate. Uh, set plus set R. Let's see. S set. Go. R. Display refresh rate. 25. Set R. Display refresh. Crash rate seventy five. Yeah. 
I guess in the uh, same area or something different. <laughs> I imagine it should be a display. I bet there's a way to set this, but how do you find Elite Forces uh, Console Commands? Let's see. So, console. Sheet, so I don't want that, but okay. So you guys are in the same era, then at least. But oh, same storm, huh? Be a big one. Yeah, it's true. Just to put a normal camera on here. Yeah, it's funny because I could, uh, if I do this, move this camera guy here. Look at that. See, there is a screen there. While I'm messing with that, maybe I can figure out a way to just uh, show you the monitor here. Get the uh, at least uh, see something going on. What I'm trying to find now, of course, is the console commands that would set refresh rate. Because I think there is uh, some way to do that, but I just wonder what command that might be. That's what I'm seeing, of course, but then it's the higher uh, frame rate that's causing the problem. So right now, if I press the monitor, yeah, it's 90, 90 hertz. That's just higher than I want. Unless I can force that. Uh, I know someone mentioned earlier, but maybe in the video card controls. Oop, and then we get sync again. So let's see if we can force it in the display driver settings or something. Um, this has the Radeon stuff, so it should be pretty. Yeah, display settings. Ideally, we basically remove any of the higher uh, frame rate um, options, basically. All very complicated. Something should have been uh, um don't think I have any Gundam Gundam games. Um let's see, can I do troubleshooting? It just goes to here. Isn't that an exciting evening of just watching me, uh... <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, vote of confidence there. Stream so I don't have to watch someone else stream so I don't have to. Kick up the brightness here now, because it went really dark when I went to direct, so... Um, that's too bright. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we'll get to a game. And at this point, I might just switch computers here and just go to a Windows Sunday 5 game or something because it's getting, uh, or a uh, DOS game. It's getting kind of droll now just to mess around with this. In that case, I may switch back to what I was playing the other night, which is Dungeon Keeper, because that was fun. Okay, 3D tab to custom settings, vertical sync. Uh, I'll try that. Thanks for the tip. Some settings, and then uh, wait for vertical sync. Always on. So you're thinking the vertical sync, uh, because the monitor, then the problem is it should lock to your monitor fresh rate. The problem is the monitor can handle a lot, right? It can handle up to like 120 hertz. So 
Um, but we can try it. The problem is that what's happening there is that the um, the monitor is synchronizing correctly, right? Uh, and um, producing the, the 90, 90 hertz. I think it's bringing us back to that now, yeah. There's got to be a way to do the... Cheats, I want um, resolution. Setting game launch options. Uh, let's see. Leaved forces game Maybe, maybe we should actually read the readme. Who knows? Maybe they put the startup options in there or something. Um, that would be pretty silly if this has been in there the whole time, but software, read me. Do they have any startup options here? Shooting video cards. On to resolution. Four. Well, yeah, the maximum that it can handle it. What I may have to do is just get a monitor that's uh that can't handle the Yeah, the monitor resolution or the refresh rate should be set to uh I can check. But it is of course uh okay, it's default right now. When you let me. That's not helpful, because I like it to uh be of course the they have the monitor in here. Without it. The yes. Oh, look at that. Right there. Wow. Okay, I actually found it. So in theory, it should actually show what... There we go. Let's give this a shot now, then. Set it to 75. It should synchronize correctly. Uh, it's set it to 75. So now... Combine it with your tip there, the Synergy 1987. <laughs> In theory, it should retain that then we start the game, but we'll find out. Where it's gonna go, look at that. Genius, thank you, sir. It's a collaborative effort there. Me totally fumbling around like an idiot and you being a genius. That is a very good tip, thank you very much. Because usually I'm switching around equipment so much that I definitely don't um, fine tune each device, like you can tell. So I'm trying to get that working now, so it all just works. But thank you very much for that tip. That is extremely helpful to know. Because that should make me be able to stream the other games that I had problems with too. And we're in the game. Look, only an hour oh nine and on the clock. That's nothing when it comes to setting up an old classic PC game, right? <laughs> so now we can actually check the settings. It looks really nice and clear, too. I have the uh, resolution setter now to 1280 by 1024. Of course, this computer is overpowered for this game, so we can run with max everything, and we'll give it a shot. Uh, that's awesome. I really appreciate that tip. That's a really good, uh, good point. Um, those settings and it makes total sense when you say it but i swear i've done this in the past too i remember you were down a rabbit hole trying to figure out a a, a problem right and you're just like running on some tangent forever and that's kind of where my mind was going now especially you got people watching me right uh, so that this works it's, it's amazing and uh, we'll do normal i guess your may or male guy normal and we'll do easy. I don't feel like dying a whole bunch. Engage. Let's see how this game actually works, though. Yeah, I heard that that's supposed to work too. Because I've wanted to use in uh, Windows 98 Overkill Machine to use an Audrey card, and I've heard that should work. Uh, you're right, Ted. This game probably be crap after we get started. 
Look at that, it's so realistic. The game might be bad. But yeah, I've heard um, that the Oddity should work, and I've seen people mention in forum posts, like, oh, it should work and everything, but I just... It has a lot of problems and work, so... Oh, did you get it? Oh yeah, awesome. Because I've heard that the, uh, it sh again, it should work just fine, but then there's been problems to get it to work, so... And it's like getting all that newer stuff to work for Windows 98, and even my overkill machine I built that had, uh, I'm pretty sure, a, just a time of live card in it. I really tried with an Audrey or Audrey 2, and I remember you reading that you could, but I just abandoned the time. Here's the magical MacGuffin. Look at that, it looks exactly like her. From the rest, Monroe is attempting to rescue the team. See how this game actually plays now, yeah, because again, I might be awful at this, which is why I set it to easy. Some amazing Quake 3 level graphics here. Oh, wow. Look at that quality. Get a little brighter. Mission key. Is that tab? Yeah, rescue your teammates. Oh, that's still way too dark. Let me make that brighter, too. That's so challenging between games, because it looks fine on the CRT here, but then the actual capture is just dark. That's too bright. You guys will be able to see something. There, it's probably passable. There we go. Yeah, okay, well, let's see where we're going. So, remember with the Borg, you're not supposed to... Oh. Costs uh, a threat, but then I did, of course, and now they're really mad at me. That's fine. Okay, I may have to look at the uh, shortcuts here. <laughs> Full on point. It's like a uh, Sims 4 porn video. Okay. Uh, so that's the button. Use a space, because of course it is. It's our jump button. Run, shift. X is jump, okay. So I can't do anything with the distribution node. There we go, I broke it. There we go. Hello. Gonna. Have to blow this up. Yep. C is crouch. Weapon energy terminal. Yes, please. Uh, let's see. Where are we going? Hello. So I think this one is like it drops you at the end of the Voyager series. Basically, you're trying to get back to Earth. And it's the last, like, things. Like some games or, you know, shows drop you at the very action at the last second there. So that shuts them all of them. And for this season to defeat, I don't think there should be much of a problem with the Federation, right? Hello? Hello? We're not a threat, we're just gonna keep walking. Rescue your teammates. Where are my teammates? Looks good. Better? Okay. We'll go here then. Loading something new there. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. That was promising. The premise is cool because it's like uh, the hazard team uh, is basically like an elite, well, elite forces, right? It's basically like a. Uh, You know, team that gets sent out when a normal away team isn't enough, so. Rescue your teammates. Okay. I'm just going to grab this first. 
Um, yeah, I did uh, play Alien vs. Predator 2 uh, a little bit. Uh, I do have the box copy up and everything. Uh, Elite, uh, that is ridiculously fun in multiplayer. And I just... And maybe it was uh, Alien vs. Predator 1 I played in multiplayer mostly, but I just love being an alien. Because, I don't know, I have fairly good directional sense. I was able to crawl on the wall and up the ceiling and everything. And my buddies, I just loved scaring <laughs> pants off. <laughs> it was just so funny. Because they're like, you know, Marines walking around. They're like, what was that? And I'm like just sitting on a ceiling somewhere hissing. And they're like, ah! Oh! I just, oh, I love it. That was the most fun I've had in a multiplayer game for a long time. I'll try that again, too, sometime. Well, hello. So I assume the I mod here that we have is... Is uh, something that modulates constantly. Then the idea with the Borg is they constantly adapt, I guess. I'm going to try and, like, remember my movie lore here now from or show lore from many years ago more purposes we're just gonna blast it all aha uh, we need more teammates so where are more teammates got that hmm. no map Yeah, it does look like the ship holes from Unreal. Um, definitely does. Oh, that's right. Uh, run is not enabled by default. You have to hold shift. Probably enable all run. Aha. Hey, blue force field? I don't see a dismo here. Hmm, must have a special power source. Yeah, they didn't put the the actual uh, thing to blow it up next to it. Hmm, that's weird. Why wouldn't they? Still, I mean, Raven Software made amazing games back in the day. Um, some weapon energy. They took really, like, you know, creative ideas with their source, ma source material as well. I think they made the uh, Jedi Outcast um, as well, which is a really cool FPS set in the... Uh, whatever you just said, I'm sure it was important. Oh, that might be a cricket that's inside the house. Oh, whoops, it Daisy. Apparently, you die if you fall down there, so let's try it again. Yeah, I think a cricket got in here. You can hear it. Loud. Well, that's pretty funny. It's died right away. Sounds like there's a heck of a storm going over the aisles there now. Oh, what? where did it drop me? Oh my. Alright, well, I'll try and not die this time then. Even on easy, I just die by the... Not if you whine about it. Yeah, Raven was. I don't know what happened on Raven Software. Um, I assume they got, you know, disbanded or assimilated or kind of split up or whatever, but I don't think I've ever heard where they went after. Yeah, they made really good games. Quite a while there. Well, now I know where to go. Try not die in the shaft there. And it doesn't get any more 90s than a Quake 3 based game made by Raven Software and Star Trek, right? <laughs> That's, uh. Nice archetype there. Okay, so. Go down here, but not. Do not fall down here. Aha! That's what we're supposed to do, not actually jump down. A plus for acting there. Right, 
where did that force field go then? Up here, wasn't it? Uh, elevator? Borg sure are smart and collective minded, but they sure can't turn off the elevators. They'll make it convenient for the bad guys. So here's where that force field was. So let's see where this goes. Pro panel. <laughs> Enter a new area, aka loading. Yeah, it's actual spinning disc, so that would probably be faster on some sort of solid state uh, media, but that is definitely on regular disc, so. Uh, health terminal, weapon energy, that's it's always a good sign when you find um, health and weapon. An ammo and everything sitting in head of a room, right? This is good though. It's cool. I mean, it's like set right in the the prime of Star Trek, right? So, or at least I consider the next generation setting and all that stuff, and you know, Deep Space Nine, and it certainly feels like the most popular era of Star Trek. But I also have not watched any of the really new stuff. I should admit, I haven't watched Picard, I have not watched Discovery either, so I don't have a CBS All Access. I think it's streamed in other places. Uh, in uh, internationally, but might be wrong there. We need some health energy. Oh, wait for me, elevator. Back. There's something endearing about the this the set of graphics because it's got that chunky style from the '90s, um, and it's not like fully chunky like you know you had your. Uh, Pure DOS stuff, but the board took the team through there. Beam out, Chang. You've done all you can. Easy. Can I beam out too? No. Do back and check. Probably supposed to hop on something there. That's right. And it's funny because uh, I definitely watched, you know, next generation stuff. You know, necessarily when it was gone on everything. So yeah, I have a DS9 game. I, I actually tried it too. It's like it's Fallen, is it called, or something like that? I got a big box for it. So you're supposed to jump on these things or what? No. That doesn't seem possible. You can. Whee! Okay, you just ride it like an elevator. Okay, never mind. Um, I haven't tried that one, but yeah, I definitely uh, watch kind of like Star Trek or uh, Next Gen when it was on like syndication on later on. Certainly didn't catch it live. I was pretty young for that. Uh, but then I was actually sick on a vacation many years ago. Um, and we had Wi-Fi at the place, so I actually ended up watching Voyager. Just like I wanted, just like something to turn my mind off because I was like just feverish and everything. So I started watching Voyager, and I watched it all the way through over the course of the next several months, and I, I liked it. It wasn't bad at all. Then I kind of got the bug to watch more Star Trek, and um, oh, who's firing at me? They're going down, which is probably what I want. Waiting for the next one. I see, it squished me. Come on. Okay, so now it's going up. Now down. Well, oh, that cricket's loud in here. I don't know where it is, where it is but I managed to get in somehow. Spend energy, there we go. Hello! This is my boomstick! I don't think there was any Firefly games. Uh, I could have sworn, I could have sworn there was an attempt to make an MMO of some variety, uh, where you were flying around the verse doing all your thieving and whatnot, but I don't think it ever got past like the concept stage, or at least the, the initial stage, but I, I could have sworn there was an attempt at an MMO set in the Firefly universe. 
because MMOs were all a rage back then. Um, mid 2000s, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, but I, yeah, I don't not think it it made it. Yeah, Voyager feels like it should be the reason, but I mean, it ended on what, like 97 or something at the earliest, at the latest. Elevator, weapon energy terminal. You forget I'm um, not running because you know you're playing your dooms and whatnot these days. You're just flying along. It's one of the uh, best things they did with the new uh, new Doom was that they set uh, such a ridiculous like movement, like you're never still, and that harkens back to these old games, obviously. So. I mean, this is really well made. I mean, it's um, Star Trek game. You're in the world, moving around, so that's really cool. I believe um, once you get past this, you know, beginning, you actually uh, end up in inside of the Voyager ship. It's kind of like part of their hazard crew. Then you get to walk around the whole ship, basically. So again, that's really cool. You enjoy the show. So now we're just trying to get out of here. Entering a new area. Warning that there will be a loading sequence. <laughs> it's like they try and hide it these days. I know the one thing they love to do is like uh, hide when a character is like sliding into a narrow passageway or something. Um, and uh... oh, where's that cricket? I assume it's down there, because my cat is just staring at the one spot very intently, so we'll have to catch it later. New mission information. Or are they trying to hide those loading sequences better? And they got them really good at how they... Um, how they handle loading sequences better, because I mean, back in the day it was just like, here's the loading screen. Which, you know, it's not exactly hidden. You play like a game like Destiny 2 today and you're flying around your little ship forever when it's loading. It's yeah, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> what do you mean I can't shoot it? That's what I do. <laughs> Look at those graphics, it's so realistic. Oh, it was a training mission all along. Your tactical approach was, shall we say, tactless. All right, hazard team, report to debriefing. I bet there's a texture pack for this, because the game itself is sound, but the Atlas. <laughs> Sir Tuvok looks like he really needs to drop one. situation is not as predictable as you might desire. Your reckless decision has caused the death of you and your teammates. You have failed. Oh, man. Had you followed standard hazard team procedures, you may have survived the simulation and achieved your mission objectives. Yes, sir. I remember this looking better than this, but maybe I'm thinking of the sequel. Let's see, yeah. <laughs> that, sir. I don't think procedure would have mattered. There wasn't any way I could have possibly rescued them. Someday, Mr. Monroe, you may be called upon to do the impossible. Consider this to be your personal Kobayashi Maru. Oh, take a drink. They said uh, a buzzword. Computer, reroute turbo lift to the bridge. Uh oh. Bad stuff's afoot after loading screen. That was pretty quick loading, though, considering. I guess this machine, again, is very powerful for what we're uh, playing on here, but... Captain, we have reports of secondary EPS conduits on decks 8 and 9 
Hmm, nice. Yeah, I bet there was a lot of mod support for this. I think the Quake 3 engine just allowed them to mod just about anything, right? So. What happened? They responded to a distress signal from the Darrow Special, and it opened fire. Tuvok, they don't respond to Harry. Maybe we need to send a clearer message. Target their weapon systems and disable them. Firing phasers. <laughs> Direct hit. Phasers had no discernible effect. I don't want to voyage again now. <laughs> you like a very specific set of videos, apparently. Or leave. They never, like, disengage or leave. Kablooey. Oh no, a mysterious effect. Not again. How many times in Star Trek has there been a random thing that's tossed them somewhere else? It's like, you have the uh, suspension of disbelief, right, in a lot of Star Trek, which is fine. I mean, it's science fiction and everything, but some of the ones are just like, come on. <laughs> yeah, that I believe. And then probably just a model swap, right? So That is a good engine. It was used in a lot of games. I can't tell which one was like longer lived, the Quake 2 engine or Quake 3, because Quake 2 was around for a long time too. Games based on it, a lot of games used it. Oh, there we go, there's the intro sequence. Are they going to play the music that's going to cost me to uh, have a copyright strike against this now? Which is frustrating to say the least, by the way. I had my, uh, when I streamed like full throttle, I had a copyright strike claim against it. That's fine. I don't monetize my videos, so... Um, but sure enough, they clamped on everything like that, so... <laughs> I I would love for Tuvok to just turn around and say that. Yep, shit happens, Captain. Not much you can do. We're teleported. Who knows where? So they went pretty far in in a lot of these uh, Star Trek games where you you know, really got into it and they're pretty deep. And there's a large selection of Star Trek games. I don't have that many. Um, I'm trying to think of any other ones I have, but I have that um, DS9. I wonder if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. So DS9, The Fallen. Uh, I do have that. Never played it. It looks... Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to try it out on the stream now, I guess. Now that I can use some of my the Windows 90 machine, thanks to the tip there on the V-Sync. Windows 233 megahertz Pentium 3, so almost identical requirements. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if this runs on the uh, Break 3 engine as well. Don't see any grade marks on it for... Yeah, the box doesn't have anything in it except the game. This one, I think, has the game. Welcome to Techno Mage 7. Doing good. How's it going? It's glad to have some uh, people to hang out with here now. So, I'm trying to stream uh, different random stuff every time. I'm trying to stream more often. So, uh, I'm going to try every Wednesday and Saturday night at 8.45 Central. So. Yeah, I've heard about that one too, the Star Trek New Worlds, that it's like an RTS. I'm going to be interested to check out it. It's like, it was in the middle of the 90s where everything had to be an RTS, and I just wonder how well Star Trek translates to that. Might be a... Hang on, I want to look at the viewfinder here, because it is... Ooh, look at that. Oh, my favorite character is right here. Can I get your autograph, Captain? <laughs> I'm freaking out. Uh, so... I'm going to, our goodness.
find that cricket when I'm done here. Yeah, that's the nice part about uh, find those old games, especially PC games. Uh, you gotta find the right place. Um, they weren't considered worth anything for a while there. Now they become collectors. Items again. So, engineering this way, and... I'll run where I can go, I guess. I am heading the panel. I did hit the panel. <laughs> Shots fired four, huh? You perform inadequately. Well, try again. <laughs> Get up earlier. Yeah. yeah. I can't stream until later in the evening, so... I applaud your uh, ability to either stay up really late or get up really early. Well, that was a nice Star Trek dive there. Oh, I went the wrong way. It was over here. This control panel. There, I got it. Then Ryan died. Yeah, the brain uh, does weird things at 3 in the morning, I guess. So whatever time it is for you there now. All right, third time's the charm. I can do it. I have a big boy now. I can do hazard team stuff by like pushing buttons without my friends dying. <laughs> oh, this one. Oh man. That's harsh. Left him to die. Oh well. Good luck. I know you could have made it because I was standing there looking at you, but, you know. Sorry, Monroe. The data chunks from the Sever did everything down this way shut off. Hey, we're getting a power surge here. Monroe, quick, hit that panel and shut off this relay. That was close. Chell, I need to get this containment field down. There's an override in the jet boost tube just down that corridor. My goodness, they're, uh... Making this all really complicated just to get through a door. I just want to get to engineering. It's a Jeffrey's tube here. There it is. Whoa! It exploded. I'm glad the ship can just keep taking this damage like it's nothing. Yeah, did that do anything? Find Jeffers to Junction and proceed to engineering deck 11. Well, a map will be handy. There's one. I can't go anywhere else here. I pretty much have to go back. Let's see where we land here now. That's right, X is jump. I forgot. My bad. This way. No, that's where I came from. Can I go over here? Nope. And make the jump. So I have to go back here. I wish I had a gun now. They don't even give me a gun now. So I need to find out or Jeffers tube. Oh, I can go here now. Let's see. I can just put some signs out or something. Deck 10. Okay, we're going to deck 11. I'll say the uh, finding games are harder and harder. Um, just, you can find big box games. And I, I scan all the local marketplaces occasionally. You see them pop up very rarely these days. Because, I mean, people aren't going to keep these things. They're huge. Um... And you can still not find any yard sales and everything, and some areas are more active than others. Make your way to Man Engineering to Hubbalana with the Warp Core Breach. Okay. 
I'm gonna do everything around here, literally. Warning. Hazardous material detected. But what why is there like hazardous sewage here? Oh, that's not the jump button. So the only reason they sent me to do this stuff is because I have a hazard suit on. Perfect. Um, so yeah, it's it's hard to find deals anymore. And also, I honestly, from my own perspective, is these days when you're finding a, you know, some of these old games they're not worth that much. But like finding a really really nice game, you feel so bad because they're worth so much, and the person who's selling it may not even know, right? So it's kind of like hard balance. That's getting harder on the finders than them, so that's true. I do collect them all, so you don't have to, and it's getting easier and easier. I was looking a lot now. My friends know I'm looking at the the Mister for emulation for consoles and everything, because the Pi is very functional and, and everything. But the Mister can emulate just flawlessly, right? Um, actual machine emulation versus software emulation of the. Oh, we got a helmet now. Um, so that's one thing you can do that. It can emulate a 486 computer like an actual machine. And you can run everything like a 486 can run, uh, which is crazy. It's just a software thing. Attention. Warp core breach imminent. What am I doing here? I should probably listen to what they said. Attention, this lift has malfunction. Where's the ladder? Attention. This lift has malfunctioned. Oh, I should listen to what she said. Displaying power relay access code. Got it. The warp core breaches all the time in this, like, it's funny, I read an article talking about how it's, like, how unreliable this technology is, because it breaks all the time. Like, there's nothing that they use that actually just works every time. What does it say? First shut down the power relays on the main level, so I gotta find all the power relays. Nice. That was, uh... CEX, huh? Is that the convention or whatever? I can't remember now. Or a CEX is probably a store, but... Power relays have been cut. Attention. Warp core breach in 30 seconds. Attention. This lift has okay, but how do I get up to the second level? 20. Oh well, the Voyager had a good run, so. Ten. Nine. May have a hug the. Um... Eight. Seven. How do you get up to the second level? At least I know where to go now. Five. Sort of. Four. Three. Two. One. Attention. Warp core breach imminent. Oh. Warning. Like, again, everything is malfunctioning. Everyone died. That's fine. I mean, it's in the future I might say, like, yes, I saw you were doing really good until everyone died. That yeah, is nice when you, uh, like, especially uh, most of the places I find now, and of course I'm not really scanning around these days. <laughs> I can't give any more power, Captain. This is about to blow. Are you kidding me? How far back did that set? Hmm. Alright, not too awful. Oh, boy. Alright, we're going to do the... Hopefully prevent this warp core breach. While the ship's getting bombarded this entire time. 
And I'm gonna call it there. <laughs> Come on. Open's the door. Okay, maybe this time I'll actually sort of, sort of listen to what she's saying. What was that? I wasn't paying attention. Monroe, what took you so long? We've got a warp core breach in progress. You need to get in there and shut it down. There are two things you have to do, so listen carefully. First, cut the power relays on the main floor. Then go to the upper level and decouple the dilithium matrix. Got it. Wait a minute. You're going to need a helmet. There are clingers on the starboard bow. I've got one in my transporter bunker. Well, that's convenient. There isn't much time before we lose containment. Dorky helmet. Okay. Maybe this time we can actually uh, do this without. Hurry, Monroe. I'm not sure how much time you've got left. Attention. Warp core breach imminent. Displaying power relay. Okay, now I go to the ladder. Warp core breach in 30 seconds. So where is the Dalithium matrix? Twenty. Oh come on. Where is it? Dilithium matrix decoupled. There we go. Warp core so I shut all that down. So we don't have any power then, right? Or just battery back up? Because it's still in like... Good job, Ensign. That was touch and go there for a little while. <laughs> sure. No problem, Tenant. Stiff animation. Okay, again, it just breaks down all the time. They're like so cash. They're like, well, the whole ship is down. But we'll fix it. How long do you need to repair it? Oh, uh, four minutes. Boy, they, uh, it's funny because I, I, I think I must have played um, two more almost. Because in two, you start at. I think you start with um, on the Voyager, and as you're getting home or whatever. And then you actually go to serve on Enterprise. So um, Patrick Stewart voices, and probably one of his. He's always great in general, but he is very flat in that game, I think, because he just kind of phoned in. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I'm uh, glad I have some people to... Oh, thanks. You gave me... <laughs> Aha! There we go. I was uh, phoning you got some... Oh, look, another person. I recognize him. Ah! Um, it's always more fun to, to play these games when I have people watching and everything. So, Because I'm like experiencing all these old games again. Got it. Shoot anything that we don't like. Oh, my goodness. Klingons? And they are there. Don't seem to be uh, too concerned about me, so... Come in in the back here and just shoot him. Scavenger rifle. Nice. Aha! Huh. Yeah, I know. I. Uh, it's interesting because uh, I. Post the stream like going live here ahead of time, um, but it's I don't know exactly how the YouTube notification. If you don't have the bell on on a stream or the channel, I don't think it notifies you right away when it goes live. I'll try and post it ahead of time too, but I also don't want to spam. I'm part of a several Facebook groups um, that I love uh, with the information I have and everything, but I hate to just spam every time I go live. So, in general, I will be streaming every Wednesday and Saturday this time. So unfortunately, I know. I really appreciate you watching. 
Uh, that might be a little tougher. Your time is going to be three in the morning every night or every time. Yeah. How's it going there? Need some help there? You alright? Chiropractor? Oh, there we go! Oh, holy cow! He's active. <laughs> what am I doing again? Boy, there's a lot of people coming in here. Aha! It's over, Klingons. I have the high ground. Oh, not anymore. Did we get him? There's more. This convenient one, uh, they have a explanation in the universe for how enemies can just uh, pop in, right? They actually just teleport in. It's amazing. It works for see, perfectly. I don't have to worry about, like, character pop in or where do enemies come from. Huzzah! And now we're going to shuttle for some... Oh, that was the boarding party. Be serious. Dramatic zoom out. Lieutenant Foster, have the team report to hazard operations. Probably going to tie it up here for this hazard ops thing here. This little presentation. This has got it working, so I really appreciate you guys' this, uh, input. So Synergy 1987 there to have that uh, great idea on. If I didn't, if it, I said the wrong person, then let me know. But uh, that had the great idea on the vertical sync and setting and everything. So, so it works fine, which is nice. There are several games I want to try and stream because of this. So, we have detected an energy dampening field surrounding the area that is draining Voyager systems of power. For the moment, we are trapped like the other ships and cannot escape. Or they have the actual skeleton animations that they can look at the mouse like it's just. Just a texture moving. It's cool, but the the jaw is definitely not <laughs> complicated thing. Uh, intercoupled with uh, simplistic explanation. There's a dampening energy field, like, like the Bermuda Triangle back on Earth. Short-range sensors operational. Sensors. To locate their vessel since it departed. <laughs> I don't have a gun to shoot him right now. However, I assume you can use him in deathmatch, though. While sensors indicate no life signs, we have detected a functioning power source on board. <laughs> Our hope is that their they do look like that, yeah. Still operational and contain information about this area. The hazard team will transport onto this vessel and retrieve any files that are still intact. No life signs? Like a ghost ship. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> oh, he's gonna die. Are quite illogical. The annoying character? Oh, he's gonna die. Is recommended. Your team leader, Lieutenant Foster, will now brief you on your specific mission objectives. Lieutenant? All right. This is an information gathering mission. Minimal encounter probability. Sure. The hazard team will split up into two squads. Alpha Squad, my group, will beam into control room A. Ensign Monroe and Beta Squad... Well, I mean, and Raven did, um... Room B. <laughs> Our objective is to have at least one yes, I will make nothing but, uh, Sims porn. Any information we can and I actually own the, the copy, box copy of Sims 1, I believe. But I haven't played it much at all. I played it a little bit. Certainly not enough to get to that sort of video. Any you may be sucker, suffering from, uh... Lack of sleep delirium there a little bit. Oviedo in the equipment room. Gear up, then report to transporter room one. Dismiss. Uh, he probably says something important about the briefing there, but who knows. Yeah, I think I'm going to save there, uh, if I can. 
save game. Save. All right, there we go. Oh, that's a really cool um, screenshot. World screenshot. TGA file. All right. I had, I think, a Windows XP theme thing that was L cars. I thought it was just so cool. Um, I'm going to it's the brightness again. That really high in that game. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, I probably will stream Dune 2000. Uh, I'll have to give that a try too. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stream again on Saturday night. Uh, hopefully, unless something comes up. Um, it was uh, really fun to have you guys hanging out with me and just, well, watching me fumble around on my desk until someone else found a solution for me, basically. So, plenty more games where that came from. Can't, uh, I never really know what game I'm going to play ahead of time. If there's one game I really get stuck on, I might play it more than once. But in general, I'll probably just play a random game every time. Um, you know, it'll be fun to get further in this game. But a lot of these games, like, I feel like they really want to be a lot of fun to be worth putting that sort of time investment in it. Especially when there's a lot of other cool games, too. And it's just so many, like you can see behind me, to try out that I never tried. Um, there's just so many of them. But I will double check that I do have the disc before, and uh, or that the disc doesn't have literal gunk on it. Um, although we were able to clean off. We're getting ejected now. Well, let me. Um, actually, wasn't too. Uh, too bad once we got it working, but then, of course, it didn't actually have the actual game, so we're going to figure that out. So, anyway, I really appreciate you guys hanging out, um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again, again on Saturday night about the same time. Um, otherwise, have a good one. I'll see you later.